Welcome back. Kyle, did you have any G.I. Joes as a kid? No. My parents never loved me, so I had to make my own G.I. Joes, and I called them G.I. Lonelies. Hey guys, G.I. Kyle reporting for duty. Uh, hey Kyle, uh, it looks like we don't need you because the war's over. But, but, but the, the, the war started yesterday. Uh, well, we don't need you. Get out of here, no one likes you, Kyle. That's sad. Were you at least excited for the G.I. Joe movie that just came out? Okay, guns, explosions, Dwayne, The Rock, Johnson, of course I was. Well, let's see what our movie snobs thought of G.I. Joe Retaliation. Zach, Zach, oh. thank goodness you're back. I missed you so much. Please don't ever leave me again, and don't leave me with Kyle. Please don't leave me with Kyle. Oh, uh, really? Yes, I missed you so much. Oh, okay, well this is weird. Can we just talk about G.I. Joe Retaliation? You ruin the moment. You want to make a difference. Make ready, let's go! Risk your life. For a better world. I don't want to talk about that movie. That's 110 minutes I will regret for the rest of my life. You know what? For once, I actually completely agree with you, Jamie. That movie was an embarrassment to American cinema. Several people actually looked at this movie and decided it was worth showing other people. What were they thinking? If this movie is an example of the standard for movies nowadays, then I fear for our future. You with me? G.I. Joe Retaliation is about the Tooth Fairy and Magic Mike leading an elite force of commandos against the forces of Cobra. But when an imposter within the U.S. government orders the termination of the Joes, the few surviving members mount an effort to bring justice to those responsible with the help of John McClane. So, dear John dies in the first 15 minutes. Whoa! Jamie, spoiler alert. Come on. <laughs> oh, please. If they still go see this movie after our review, they deserve to have it spoiled. Today, the world's elite fighting force betrayed our nation. On my orders, the G.I. Joes were terminated with extreme prejudice. Anyway, the Scorpion King becomes commander of the Joes after Step Up falls victim to an airstrike ordered by President. <laughs> president who? They never said. Even the credits just said President. Okay, but he's actually Zoltan in disguise and working for a Cobra commander anyway. Spoiler! The plot plays out like a group of 10 year olds gathered up all their G.I. Joes, threw them in a pile and played with them for an hour and a half before snack time. And then The Rock was in a boat and he was on the beach and he had the guns and he was fighting the guy with the briefcase because briefcases are awesome. Okay, we and get it. Shut up. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still not used to us agreeing on something. Let's move. World ain't saving itself. After the movie, Jamie and I came up with a plan to make sure this never happens again. We believe that everyone involved with G.I. Joe Retaliation should be sent to a remote island and locked up so they can't hurt anyone anymore. We can turn it into a reality show. And they compete in challenges, but here's the twist. They all lose and never come back because this was a catastrophe of a movie. Sorry, Bruce Willis. We like you and we'll miss you, but you could have stopped this. And didn't. We joke a lot here on Goofing Off. We like to laugh, but we want to take a moment to be serious with you. This movie is honestly awful. Do not go see it. We are warning you now. If you go, it will leave you angry and confused. For your own well-being, heed our warning. It's too late for us, but you can still be saved. Good night and good luck. We have to assume that there's no one we can trust. There is one man. You all right? My cholesterol's a little high. Looks like retaliation is a disappointment. That was an understatement. 
You know what isn't a disappointment? Air shows. Air shows are totally American. And you know what else is American? Flying cities. This is our review of Bioshock Infinite. After six years and a few delays, Bioshock Infinite is finally here. Albeit with a bit of a Call of Duty twist in the form of a perk system, the combat mechanics, and well, even all the way down to the number of weapons you can carry. Seriously, Bioshock 1, you can carry all the weapons. Bioshock Infinite, you are limited in what you can hold. Anyone else see the irony? Just because DeWitt's weapon pockets are a bit smaller, doesn't mean it isn't true to the series. The pieces are all there. Audio diaries, Sweet mother of Columbia. a deep and enticing plot, and of course, a twisted and unfamiliar world with unparalleled detail. Good to see you. Exploration in Infinite is a bit of a mixed bag. The breathtaking vistas of Columbia deserve to have every corner thoroughly explored, but the lack of a map, mini or otherwise, and the non-stop one-way action can't help but make you feel like you've missed something along the way. However, no matter how little you stray from the main path, it's impossible to ignore the citizens that give Columbia a sense of life that you could never really experience in Rapture. Right. Unfortunately, DeWitt's inability to interact with them makes it appear as though they're stuck behind some sort of glass display, as if an exhibit in a museum. The ones that aren't literally stuck behind glass displays as exhibits. That being said, Elizabeth and Comstock's interactions with you shine bright enough for all of them. What could be better than this? Seriously though, Elizabeth, best NPC of any video game ever. She has a great personality, takes care of herself, constantly gives you free stuff, but she's even got a better repertoire of powers than Booker, cliche fans to win. You're the girl who's getting out of this tower. Here's hoping for that Elizabeth's Perspective DLC. Infinite's addicting story and insane attention to artistic detail created an unforgettable experience akin to the first Bioshock. But its linear gameplay and sporadic combat encounters created a chasm that sometimes made it feel like you were playing two different games Overall, we give Bioshock Infinite four out of five goofs. Whatever you do, do not pick number 77. Stop. 77. Now it's time for this episode's top five. This is our top five most American movies. Coming in at number five, Die Hard 5. A good day to Die Hard is completely American, but it's in Russia. Our number four is Die Hard 4. Live Free or Die Hard has Kevin Smith and Justin Long, two of the most American actors we have to date. Number three is Die Hard 3. Samuel L. Jackson is clearly the thesis statement to America. Number two is pretty obvious, the original Die Hard. This movie is our show's favorite American Christmas movie and not like the boring overplay and clearly overrated A Christmas Story. And you guessed it, our number one is Independence Day. Nothing screams America like Will Smith punching aliens. Next time on Goofing Off, we travel to Westeros to review the Game of Thrones board game, our movie snobs slack off and just watch the trailers for summer movies, and Goofing Off finally jumps the shark. I'm Danny Mars. And I'm Kyle Wirtz. And thank you for taking the time to goof off with us. <laughs> <laughs> Claire and Jamie are fighting. It's my fault. This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. To find out how you can make Emmy winning media, visit the UA School of Communication online. ZTV. Make media. Make a difference.